Here he comes. Here he comes with the freshest match data in town. Let's start with what sellers love to hear about prices compared to last month. Detached homes are up, townhouses are up and up, but wait, apartments up or down? Not only did they not go up, but also they actually went down. Wow! Talk about a plot twist. It's like the universe did a spin, and now it's the apartment buyer's turn to laugh. Go ahead, give us a. L O L for five minutes first, and then come back. Why? Because once you the buyers dive deeper, that green might do a little retreat. Especially after checking out the stress ratio chart. Actually. The chart name says it all: average price. According to my own understanding, for example, this month in Greater Vancouver, if only two condos sold, one is half a million dollars, another one is one point five million dollars. The average price is one million dollar. If next month. There's only one condo sold. The price is two million dollars. Then the condo average price will be increased from one million dollar to two million dollars. Is that funny? Is that ridiculous? Not really. If we get many transactions, it's not this kind of ridiculous. But I just want to show you this chart is not. That reliable? Do you really rely on average price? That's why I want to tell you another price. It's called benchmark price from the same board. The apartment benchmark price went from seven hundred seventy thousand seven hundred dollars in February to seven hundred seventy seven thousand five hundred dollars in March. For me, this benchmark price is more reliable and more realistic. How about you? Which price do you believe? Probably you will ask me, "What? What's going on? How come the same data, the same board, and they get two prices, and one says the price is up, another says the price is down? What's the deal? Actually, you know what?" It's a very good sample about what I always emphasize: same data with different analysis methods, different perspectives. The conclusions can be as different as night and day. Tell me what's your conclusion so far in comment area. Personally, as for this chart. I've always seen it as more of a trend indicator than a hardcore market observer, especially not for prices. When it comes down to the price for your case, aside from the general market web, the tug of war between buyers and sellers, negotiation strategies, tactics, and skills. Play a significant role. Do you agree what I said? Tell me your unique method in the comment area. Let's take a look at the overall trading volume. It's on a continuous rise. One, two, three. It's been rising three times in a row, and not only that, but the tails. And it's also staking up, and quite steeply at that. According to your sense, the volume will go up or down next month. Please let me know in the comment area.
All right. So the sales volume of single houses, oh boy, is shooting up like a rocket as well. Straight up, no messing around. Even the transaction number is not very big, but the dollar volume is big, right? Also, the persistent attitude is a good example for me. I need to learn from this. I need persistence for my life. Are you a buyer or seller of single houses? Are you happy or sad about this trend, this chart? Okay, regarding townhouses. So imagine this, right? These townhouses are like those overachieving students who just won't quit. I mean, their tails are not just curling up; they are practically shooting straight up like a rocket. It's like they are on a mission to touch the sky with their tails. Watch out! We've got some serious tail research here, but anyway, the maximum volume is only around one thousand. So take care and good luck. Oh man, the apartment market is unfair. I mean, seriously, it's going up like nobody's business. And hey, heads up, the tail end is still sticking up, like really steep. It's like watching a roller coaster, but with buildings. You know, crazy times in the real estate world. For condo, minimum is almost always one thousand transactions a month. This is the not silent majority. All right, you finished all the sales numbers. Whether you look at the total or break it down, hasn't quite reached the epic levels of last May. But hey, the trend lines are all like charge. We are gonna conquer last year's peak. That's the trend lines mission and dream. What's yours? About the next month's trading volume, are you praying to skyrocket like it's on a mission, or are you secretly hoping it takes a nose dive? Drop a comment and spill your hopes. Some people go to church to pray, but for houses, some people pray in my comments. Why? Because like you, I believe in dream power, wishful thinking, and the magic of prayers. Okay, okay. The total listings are already up there, like they've been doing squats since 2020. A question for you: What does that mean? Option one: The market is good. Many sellers want to sell in this good market. Option two: the market is going to crash. Sellers are desperate to sell. Tell me your answer in my comment area. The listing number is big, so is that a good thing or a bad thing? Well, if you're selling, it's a double-edged sword. Loss of competition, which is a bummer. But also a bustling market, which is cool. If you're buying, it's like having a buffet of options. Definitely a win. But hold your horses. It's not about prices and transaction volume directly, and a bunch of other factors play a role in this real estate game. It's like trying to solve puzzle, and you gotta piece it all together for the full picture. Hold on one second. Are you a buyer or a seller? All right, let's take a peek at this semi-fairy chart for all types, or as I like to call it, the pressure chart. It's like the boss of all pressure charts. It has been standing on the seller's side of the market for two months in a row. 
which basically means the market is favoring sellers and not being too kind to buyers. But hold your horses. Let's break it down into categories and you'll see a big different story. Mind you, the tail is still wagging upwards, although not like a super steep mountain or anything. The pressure chart of detached horses has once again unleashed its fury this month, adding pressure for three consecutive months. But alas, the force still falls short, lingering below the 20 mark. Why is it so darn hard for the pressure on detached horses to climb up? Many sellers of detached horses are pulling their hair out. They keep hearing about how good the market is now. Why are their own detached horses not selling? Take a look at this chart and you'll get it, won't you? Buyers, come on, buy a few more horses and next month will blast past 20. Transactions are bustling in apartments and townhouses, but when it comes to detached houses, it's all about longing, longing, and more longing. But sellers, besides longing, consider this, make a deal, not too greedy, and there will be no more longing from then on, just remember two things from my last video. Number one, greedy is the biggest enemy of investing. Number two, according to the history, going up usually maximum four months only, and then may it may go down very fast. So don't miss the opportunity. Note, the tail keeps curling upwards. Please tell me something. Are you a buyer or a seller of single houses? You want more pressure next month or less pressure? Let's take a look at the semi ferry pressure chart of the apartment. The curve looks pretty similar, right? At the first glance, yes, it does. But when you zoom in, oh boy, all the devils come out. First off, since 2020, chances below 20 have been scarce. Most of the time, it's been a seller's market. Now, here's the kicker. The tail's sagging. Not visibly so, but it's drooping. Just a wee bit of a downturn. This falls into the category of strong start but weak finish. But it's not finished yet, right? Life will continue anyway. What do you think the next is? Tell me your bet in my comment area for next month. All right, look at this townhouse ratio chart, the tail end of a townhouse, just constantly pointing upwards. If I told you it's shooting up in a straight line, would you agree? The thing is, it's been almost consistently above the 20 mark for this past few years. Are you selling or buying townhouses? What do you feel about the market? All right, let's take a peek at this magical chart of curse for everything. So unemployment has been on a slow and steady rise over the past year. Not like, oh my goodness, we are all doomed kind of rise, but enough to make us raise an eyeball and go, hmm, that's something. Now, inflation. Oh boy, it's been like a roller coaster at a carnival, up and down, loop the loop. The past couple of months, it's been doing a little shimmy down. But hold your horses, folks. 
March's latest data hasn't strutted onto the stage yet. But seriously, have you checked out the press tags at the gas station lately? They are doing the label dance at least two bucks per liter. It might hit $2.30 in April. You are probably driving an electric car, but have you ever thought about how those trucks fail? Everything from food to clothes to where you lay your head at night gets tangled up in this rising oil price web. So, what's your bet for March's inflation rate? Up or down? There is no pre-service for inflation rate of March in my comment area. Why? because I bet it will go up. But usually, almost every time I lost my bet, so take it in opposite way. Now, let's imagine you are the boss of the central bank, the head Hong Kong. You've got the power to raise, lower or keep interest rates steady. What's your move, genius? Drop your decision in the comments. All right, folks, let's take a peek at the relationship between interest rates and employment rates and the inflation rates over the past decade. Can you spot any hidden secrets in there? If you found the mystery power of predicting the future from this chart, please share with me your blog. Wow, you really watched all the way up to here. Don't go away yet. Please move your Midas Touch gold finger to click the like button, share to your friends, and leave a comment for me. Just like a very famous person said, you will be very successful if you like, share, and comment. Seriously.